chairs are probably the most satisfying thing I know of to glue up because they're a struggle. You've got a long haul before you get to this process and then all of a sudden a chair comes before your eyes. So hey, let's get into it. I'm looking forward to uh, gluing this up finally. Let's just get a, a look at what we're going to be gluing up. It's this classic craftsman inspired chair. This was a chair that I actually designed to be um, a, simple, uh, a simpler introduction to mortise and tenon chair making. So this is a great place to start if you have a hankering for making a mortise and tenon chair. This one's in white oak and thoroughly mortise and tenons throughout with these pegs and all the joints. This chair, this actual chair, you might have seen it in Fine Woodworking Magazine. It was in there. Um, I guess we did an, an article on building this chair and also on this finish. So check that out. But the thing about a chair like this, when you glue it up, it's like, okay, where do I begin? What do I glue up first? Well, it's pretty typical of this style of mortise and tenon chair that tapers from front to back. So we're wider in the front, we're narrower in the back to glue up the back assembly as one piece. So this whole back assembly gets glued up first. And then the front legs and the front rail, that's the front assembly, just those three elements, that gets glued up. Once those two are set, then you can glue the angled side rails to join the front and the back together. Yes, so that's the way we're gonna go. Now the back has multiple parts. So you might think, where do you begin there? Well, you begin inside out. So we're gonna begin with the inside is gluing up this part, the backrest called the splat. So I just wanted to show you this other chair. This is a classic 18th century version of Philadelphia inspired Chippendale chair that Pog Moore made himself. Um, at least he was involved in it. And it was sitting by my bench while I apprenticed with him and it never got finished. And he gave it to me as a parting gift along with the arms that need to be joined and put on there. But I love actually having it right in the same condition as when I was yeah, there. Nice. But this glues up the same way. Notice again on this chair, it's wider in the front than the back. Mm. So it tapers front to back. So what we want to do is glue up the back assembly as one and the front assembly as one and then the side rails in. This one glues up with the shoe across and then the splat and then the crest rail comes down last because these tenons are vertical. Here, these tenons are horizontal. So we're gonna glue this top rail into there. All right, so let's get started. Come on over. I've got all the pieces here on the bench and we have a lot of little offsets on this chair. So what you wanna do is try to address those areas. You have to have all your sanding done, all your preparation done before you glue up. And I like to wipe the glue clean with water. And the funny thing about water is if it touches wood that's been sanded and then it dries, that sanded area will feel fuzzy because all the little fibers that were scratched with the sandpaper stand up. And that's called raising the grain. And you don't want to do that right before, um, right before you put your stain on because the stain will affect raised grain in a different way. It makes it look darker usually. So what we did was I already dampened all of these parts and then I lightly sanded everything to 220. I broke all these edges, softened them up and then, and then I dampened them with just a rag squeezed out. You don't want to soak it. You're just dampening. And then once it dried, it was nice and silky again. No more fuzzy grain. So what that does is once we glue it up, if we have to go into that joint to clean off some glue with water, we'll have very little grain raised there and we'll be able to clean it off easily. And it won't give us a problem in the finishing part of the project. So everywhere you have those inside right angles, you really want to pre-sand and 
wet sand or raise the grain. All right, so these legs are still a little damp from our, actually the, I can feel the grain is raised in some areas. So I just wanna hit that inside area. I broke all the edges to soften them up. One of the key things about chairs is the bottom. See how I really broke that edge strongly? Can you see it against my hand? Oh, my spiffy apron with it nicely broken. So that helps it not to catch on the floor as it gets dragged around. You won't have splinters coming up. The back legs even more broken. In the back there, you can see where that little short grain is. I really brought that back to strengthen it. All right, so let me just hit this one and we will start the gluing up process. Let's start with something simple, the front rail into the front legs. That's our front assembly. It's just one simple joint. Here's my long front rail, and these are my side rails. These are the last ones I have to wet sand, I think. So I can feel that grain just raised a little bit there. That hole is there from a previous uh, demo, but it won't affect us at all. This is such nice grain. Look at look at how that's that rift sawn. So you're seeing the uh, medullary rays, but they they appear as flex in the long way, not across the grain. So I'll save touching up those for later. We'll see how far we get. But the first thing you always want to do before gluing up is give it a test fit. Dry fit it together so you can make sure it's going to go when you get the glue on there. It can be a real stressful thing to be gluing up and then discover <laughs> something's wrong. Alan says he's nervous and he's not even the one doing it. Ooh. Alan. Alan. <laughs> Oh, this is no no worries, Alan. <laughs> you you would breeze through this. All right, so we're gonna go across. This is the front. I got these classic three eighth inch tenons that Pug used to always do. So three eighth inch. Now you can. I just think that's a really good strong tenon for a chair. And then the lower stretchers are five sixteenths. So there we go, everything looks good. Now we've got one little issue because we're angling front to back, we've got, we've got an angle on the side where we need to clamp. So if I put that down, I have made blocks from past experience that have angles to them. So some of these, let's just set it down there. That looks pretty good, is it close? Um, this one's too strong. See how that's too much of an angle? So I just want that shallow angle I had on that first one. So here we go. Here's a couple. That one looks good. And then I'll use this one over here. Okay, let's get that glued up. Easy peasy. So when we do this, we want to make sure we glue the right Part. So I'm going to just leave it face up and take it apart just like that. Leave that mortise face up. That's the only one I'm doing right now. So I'll do this in sections. So before I plug that together, I want to just smear that glue around inside the mortise, get it a little spread out on the side walls there. All right, so make sure I've got the face forward. Ooh, I almost did that wrong. Face, I can just faintly see it. I could have put a mark up here too because my tenon is a little bit offset of the center. Now I'm gonna go into the first side. I'm just gonna get it flush 
on the top. So, Tom, why that why the tight bond instead of the hide glue? I know we, we talk about this a lot, but um, you can use hide glue. Hide glue is tough to use. I'm talking genuine heated hide glue because it tacks fast. It it cures as it cools, and uh, I mean. You'd have to have it set up so that you were just doing very few elements at a time. All your parts are good and warm. And it can be a challenge if you live in a cooler climate like we do here. And it's a great glue, but very challenging with the temperature aspect. However, there is some um, liquid hide glue. You can use that. That's a fine glue. So I'm just going to get some of this extra glue off. But I'm really liking the way that joint came together. Looks nice and snug. Tom Stewart's saying, did you make the wedges all at once or make them up as you moved from project to project? I've had these wedges hanging around because I've made chairs similar to this, you know, a few times. And when I'm ripping this angle, so that angle is the seat angle. It tapers from... 20 inches wide to 16, I believe, in the back. So that angle is set on the saw. And I, when I have that set up, I just run some extra stock to run a long strip with that angle. And then I chop it up into those little pieces, which give me the nice offset blocks. And it turns the pressure back to 90 degrees, which is what you want alignment for that joint to close up tightly. You want to be the same 90. Otherwise, it would be forcing it open in the front. But there we go. That looks great. I'm happy with that. I don't see any haze. That's good. All right, so let's move. Now we'll set that aside. Now we're going to move to the interior of the back. So here's where we want our splat. And this splat has a little different look to it. We actually put these four little holes in it to reflect more Another detail often seen in the Craftsman style. Actually, I think Macintosh was the first to start that um, in Europe. He was one of the early Craftsman makers. We did this in a Shop Night Live event. So if you've made chairs or you're going to want to make these chairs, this is actually an option I added later. So you can add that to your project. And we're going to attach both videos to, to those if you're interested in trying out chairs. So I've got the base of my back rest or splat is called the shoe. That's the horizontal lower part. And the top with the curve is, excuse me, the crest rail. So the crest rail will be on the top with the splat here. All right, so these, I've got to hit all these mortises. I'm not going to worry about the side tenons yet. I'm just going to glue the center part of this assembly so these I did number because these are identical. They should fit fine each side, but this was important to get all these edges nicely broken and sanded right up to the ends because that's really going to be difficult afterwards given the spacing and just having your fingers into those tight sp spots. So let's get it all set. Looks good. Let's get the glue going. All right, that's all I have to do. I'm not doing those end tenons yet. Now I'm gonna smooth that glue out. To do that, I need a narrower stick. I don't think I made that narrow enough. So I'm just, I'm making a custom paddle here to get into that smaller area. This project requires, like when you're doing this, your, your splat pieces all have to be dead on 
the same length or you'll have something open. All right, so here, this is the shoe facing the seat. So I want, this is my front side. I can tell because I have a little angle here. This is gonna lean back. I'm gonna set this in the middle and hopefully, all right, that went nicely. Thank you very much. <laughs> this can be stressful, but I'm trying to be very calm. All right, this one is two. So that's on this side here. Now I'm gonna just work down into the crest rail. The way this was made, these shoulders are 90 degrees. All right, I'm just gonna get the quick glue off. And this is the nice thing about gluing up a chair in stages like this. You don't, you feel like it's under control. It doesn't get away from you. And it's really a good example for practice on other pieces where you have more of a complex glue up and you're tempted to try to hit the whole thing at once. Start with the interior pieces and work your way out and just take your time. Leave joints dry um, and even assemble dry if you need to and let the interior joints first cure and then you can. Now that's a general rule. It doesn't always hold true, right? But um, it is a good strategy to give you more ease during this process. All right, so now I've got this other angle. I've got a very similar angle, so I'm using these blocks down here to cancel out this angle. So I'm gonna come down. I've got that block here, and I just need two clamps here. I'm gonna put it kind of, align it with the gap. Right here. Oh, that looks good. I'm pulling up nicely. The pegs are really for decorative effect. They do work. They do add some strength, but I just put them in after the clamps are on and uh, the glue is already setting. Sometimes I'll put in the pegs at this point and then you could take the clamps off. And that's just by drilling straight through. So a lot of times what I like to do is take a piece like this and I'm going to check it into the legs to make sure I've got alignment. Cause if I'm, if I'm off in alignment, maybe I pull these clamps too tight and I change the alignment, but I've done this enough times that I'm about to go into the legs and I think I'm going to get a correcting factor. It's pretty true. Like the way these mortises are, there wasn't a lot of room for them to go off to, mess it up but let's just see because it could happen let's just try it this is the way it goes so i know it's going to be a little bit funky but there it goes it goes in i know that's going to go now so let's go ahead and throw some clamps across this is going to give me some alignment it's probably good practice to show this Okay, and then I can put a clamp, if I pull this across and everything's tight, I'm feeling good about the squareness. And if they don't pull up, you get a bigger clamp. <laughs> Chairs are more forgiving because you have these longer pieces, so there is a little flex there. Um, but I just snug those on gently and I'm really nice and tight. So I'm feeling good about those joints. 
So <laughs> one thing I didn't do was put in that lower stretcher. So let's go ahead and get those off. And we're just gonna butter those up. All right, so here's my lower back stretcher. So this is gonna go right in here and that's got a nice little offset. So that I'm gonna have to put glue on those tenons as well as the tenons on the end of the assembly we just made. But let's go ahead and get glue in these mortises. We'll just keep trucking. Now we've got to get our short one in there. So let's set that, get that correct. All your strength is really on the sides. That's your best glue bond. Now I got three to line up. That's all. Yes. <laughs> like to see that come together. So I got to get a clamp across here nicely, quickly. where I'm actually putting pressure on that little, I'm gonna try one of these clamps. I don't use these enough. So I'm putting the, you know, you want that clamp pressure right across the joint nicely. That looks great. Okay, one more down the bottom. All these joints are looking good. Nice and snug. I think I'll flip it over here in a second. Double check the other side. Yes, those joints look awesome. I'm happy. What do you guys think? Are you happy? I'm gonna move this back to the center. Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty swirl on there. Yeah, nice green, huh? Yeah, this has some really nice rifts on. You're seeing the flecking. Just the back. This is quartered here. Yeah, that's nice rift right there. I love to get the linear rift on the splats. So try to saw those out of all closer to the same material so that the chair set looks like a set because all the crest rails and splats are from the same region on the same board. Also makes your finishing go a little easier. You don't have to sweat if they're gonna match or anything like that, so. And how will, how long will you keep the clamps on? Um, well, I'll leave these on overnight. All right, I just gotta get this off here. And given the time, what I wanna do is just dry assemble the last ones and we'll pull it up I'll show you the method for them coming up. Right in here on these inside corners, I'm just trying to get that rag in there and make sure I leave no white haze because that's actually like a, a sealant and it's gonna make it tough for, it's gonna show up in the finishing process. Sometimes the glue migrates from the other side like I had these mortises actually meet one little bit in the corner from the shoe to the side rail and you get a little drip through there so you want to it's, it's better to get that process off. huh well there's a lot of joints in there you know this is done well this will stay together I don't, it should be 200 years i mean that's the thing what we're doing you know when we're building these heirloom pieces or really you're building them the old-fashioned way that's looking good
This is nice because all those pieces now, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces are now just one section of the chair. So, but let's just put the front to back together so you can see what that looks like. All right, so this is the side rail. This is interesting. This is our front. It's going on this way. So I have to have the angle correct. This back tenon is angled, see? So that's the angle that goes into the back. The front, the front tenon has the angle on the shoulder. Okay, that's just the particular design for this. That's the back, ang the back. that's the front. So the angle is on the shoulder. And, well, I guess it's on both, on the back too. Mm. I'm gonna put them into the front first because as they go into the front, they're angled and they follow the angle of that side angle, that seat rail. So here's the other one. So you can see I've got that straight tenon, but the angled shoulder. So it's going to go in and meet the leg like that. And then the lower stretchers. These are a little complicated, these little guys, but they're so nice to get in there. Okay. And then the other side, same thing. All right, but now if you look at the other end, these tenons are now at 90 degrees. So that will drop nicely into the back tenon. So if we can bring it in this way, we can assemble it into the chair, into the back section. Get that one started. This one started. I intentionally made the back to be parallel as it goes up. So all of these joints are 90. So that takes away that confusion. However, the front seat rail does angle back into the back. So now you can see, once I would get all the glue in there, I would get my clamps on, having to use the appropriate angle blocks again to bring pressure on both front and back and down the lower stretcher. But there, you can see, that's the sequence for gluing up a classic old craftsman chair.